Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2016. Brought to you by Docker. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Seattle, Washington for DockerCon 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Brian Gracely, cloud analyst at theCUBE and Wikibon. Our next guest is Scott Johnston, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Docker, formerly the SVP of Products and Product Marketing. Um, promotion, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, Sean, good to be back. It's good, CUBE does good things. You know, you're, you, know you guys are growing. The, um, this is our third year, the size is significant, this event. Um, you're now operating the trains. Well, it's like from 400 people two years ago, right? To like over 4,000. <laughs> and the wait list is 600. So the, the wait list itself is more than that original conference well, think, two years think, ago, right? Which is even, even last year we were, we were saying hum like, like there's, a, there's a track just behind you. That's as big as the show was last year. Yeah. Now it's the entire, you know, the entire convention center. That's right. And obviously it's not just us, right? It's the community is here, the contributors on the open source side. There's been uh, large enterprise vendors and partners who've come along. And so it's just, it's just grown in all different ways in the last two years. So you're the chief operating officer now, so you're now going to run the trains and keep them on time. Uh -oh. Which sounds like it's organized, but it, as uh -oh. Jerry Chen said, startups are always in the case, uh, uh, in chaos, yes. as it forces you guys to focus. What's the current status of the operations right now? Because I'll see the growth there. Docker and numbers of Ben shared with us uh, some significant stats, which are awesome. So as you guys go to the next level, what are some of the things that you're focused on right now with Docker vis-a-vis -vis the business, the landscape, open source, yep. and now no. enterprises? It's a fair question, obviously lots of detail, but broadly speaking, right, if the, if the last couple years were about ubiquity, and working with partners to get the core runtime, core platform out there and used by everyone, right? From drones flying in the air to hardcore enterprise data centers to cloud deployments. Uh, next couple of years, from an operation standpoint, is, is scaling up the complement to that, which is the monetization, right? Which is helping uh, enterprise partners like HP that were announced uh, last week and had a, had a shout out today at the keynote. How do we work with them and, and a long list of others to, to take the management tools that help operations deploy all these applications that the developers are building, deploy them in production in ways that are scalable, safe, controlled, secure. And so, very high level, but the next two or three years are all about that build out right on the backs of the Ubiquity build out. So it's exciting, we've been covering obviously Big Data Cloud now seven years with theCUBE, and now in the trenches, now Big Data. It's interesting, the cloud now is maturing to the point where it really is enabling a tsunami of new class of applications. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Sorry to interrupt you, but like we have seen a step function change in 12 months, right? So roll it back 18 months ago, 24 months ago, it's like enterprise, yeah, we're going to have some public cloud experiments <coughs> yeah. and kick the tires. We've seen like, 180 turnabout, like no, we're going to the public cloud, and now let's yeah. figure out our, our strategy, our, our tooling that we need to do that. So I agree with you 100%. Well, I want to get your thoughts on this, because this is what we're hearing. We're hearing from practitioners and customers that uh, your customer's customer, which is, hey, now I have a clear line of sight on what the app development framework looks like. Docker containers are a nice vehicle for me to actually use existing apps as well as get me into the cloud native stuff, which is kind of the new headroom that they really are kind of betting their business on, drive more revenue but I can now have programmable infrastructure and start really tooling my IT operations to be seamless under the covers, enabling developers to be successful. No, that's right. And, and you, I mean, they can't do that with these migrations, and they can't actually do CI. Just, let's just start with just the dev, the dev test surface area, right? Forget production. They can't even do CI unless the automation's there, right? So in a crawl, walk, run, or evolutionary revolution, like you got to start with automating that initial surface area and then it expands into clouds, into hybrid clouds from there. So 100%. So now talk about the dynamic between startups, because well, the next level on this one is, okay, you got HPE, it was a great deal, HP Enterprise, you have Microsoft announcements today that you guys announced some significant you know, um, embedded points with Microsoft, and then you got some amazing startups. We were talking to um, 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 AV, uh, AV, uh, Avi. Aviatrix. Aviatrix. Yeah. yeah. Standing up uh, networks. Yes. We had also Weave on. Yes. And this is like startups, not just the big boys. No, that's right. Um, so talk that's about right. that dynamic, because and, and and the impact to you as a, uh, looking at the landscape, because if you got HPE, you got Microsoft on the on the high end. Cisco's right behind us here. IBM. And yeah. you got IBM, oh, yeah. and you got now the new guys. It's not a mutually exclusive ecosystem. It's Can not. you just share your thoughts on why that's happening? What is the signal to the customer? Yeah, it, it, no, thank you, it's not, right? Because it, on one hand, you have the enterprise vendors that are already the trusted vendors to enterprise IT, right? And they have, they have solution stacks 
that have many of, of their kind of proprietary value add solutions and what, what we're doing largely with them at, at a very high level is making those solution stacks kind of Docker native, right? So exactly the, the very workflow you were highlighting, the end-to-end the -end Dockerized applications from the developer laptop all the way into production, that those platforms are Docker application ready, right? So that's a big motion there, but as you know, John, we talked about it many times, the Docker platform is a horizontal platform with open APIs for all these various resources, for storage, for networking, for monitoring, for security. And so the, the smaller guys, as you say, the, the startup community or the, the, the innovators are really going great guns on providing Docker native solutions for those plugins that plug into the infrastructure and enable special capabilities for networking, for distributed mm -hmm. storage, and things like that. So they're absolutely complementary and um, and we're, we're, we're glad to see growth on both, both ends. I got to say, I'm impressed by the, I've always been impressed by the management team at Docker, but I like the new moves. So you were running product and engineering and product management. Mariana, product management, product design. Product design, okay, Sorry. technicality, close yeah. enough. All right. I mean, but <laughs> you're a product guy. So All product right. guy is now COO, Mariana is now, was VP of engineering, now she's doing alliances and strategic strategy yep. stuff. Yep. So it's clear the signaling is, it's a product centric company. It is, um, it is. Where's the white space? So now everyone wants to know, where's the white space? Because the ecosystem is on fire, and there's a lot of people that are betting their life on Docker right now, not sure. life, but like their, their, sure. their commercial business. I want to build on Docker, I'm going to bet the ranch on Docker, no pun intended, we got Rancher Labs here, but what is that white space? What do you tell your developers from a product standpoint, here's where you want to play? Is there a, a, a known um, white space map that you guys have, well, or? Well, I mean, think about it, it we, are, we are a tool for the application delivery pipeline, right? I mean, we start with developers, but our tooling is useful to QA, it's useful to operations, it's useful to security folks as well. And so, you know, the, the white space is not that we're a new application, but that we're a, a new set of tools for developers and the rest of the participants in the value chain to, to build, ship, and run their software. And so, I, I'd say it's, it's less that we're gunning for this, this big kind of wide open space in, in their own kind of uh, infrastructure, their workflow, but it's more like, they face problems. They say, oh, we can only ship with our current processes, our current tools, we can only ship once a month. Ship yeah. changes to production. Yeah. I and, think I guess what I hear you saying right? is white space and is like, kind of an old concept because what's different, I mean, that's an old map, white space. You get that's open right. source now, and you have really unknown opportunities that are flying into the coop, so to speak. So you really, the white space is everything. Right? Yeah, I'm, in a way, but the, I mean. The, the currency is speed, right? The currency for the enterprise application teams is speed. And so how do we, how do we get in there and help them ship applications faster? And so maybe where, where you're going though is, is you know, why, why is Docker seen as the go-to tool or go-to platform for that? And I'll go back to something we said a lot in these last two days, which is the democratization of really hardcore technology, right? So Docker, March 2013, when it open sourced, yeah. democratized containers. Containers as a body of technology had been around. They've been around for decades. But they were difficult to use, they're difficult conceptually to get your heads around, and so hardcore system engineers, hardcore kernel engineers were the only ones that could really take advantage of that power. Docker took very powerful but very difficult to use technology, gave you the power with a dramatically easier to use interface, such that all devs, all sysadmins could take advantage of it. I guess what I'm getting it, at right? is, I guess what I'm getting at is, the that's developers are afraid that's of only off. one thing. I spend time developing, I don't want to get rolled over by Docker if they've built it out. I know Solomon says batteries are included, swap up or whatever that is. But Microsoft back in the old days, there when they were at the height of their developer, you knew what they were doing. If you crossed in that path, the boundaries, you would they you knew yeah, they were yeah, release right, product, right? right? So right. the developers just was very clean. There's the line. Yeah. We're not going to be an OS player, so we don't Got compete it. there. I just swap. You mean you mean the ecosystem. Where, where's the white space for the yes. rest of the ecosystem? Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and that's because okay. that's where the people want to grow, right? Yes, so, so we're a horizontal platform first and foremost, right? Which means that when it comes to the APIs, the application facing APIs, like those are near and dear to us. Because, why? Because the, the big value proposition of Docker is the portability, right? So, so the application facing APIs are sacrosanct, right? Yeah. Like those have to remain 100% portable whether it's running on your laptop, cloud, data center, OpenStack, bare metal, right? The southbound APIs, if you will, the infrastructure facing APIs, those are open, and those are those are those are the white space. That's the that's the have at because we are not storage experts. Yeah. We are not networking experts. We are platform experts, yeah. and we are enabling the ecosystem to grow at these very specific. They can APIs go to plans. town all day long. And that's you see you look at behind us, and you see a lot of the folks in the booths. Like that's that's where a lot of their energies are going. We've been talking about this with a number of companies, but Docker's a, a, a different kind of company now in terms of 
uh, part of your product's open source, so it's you can get it without engaging with Docker. Yes. Uh, part of your roadmap's going to be out in the open source domain. Very People can see what's going on, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, part of it is they're going to trust you to be a SaaS provider to help run their operations. Yep. What, as you talk to enterprise customers who are used to dealing with whoever, right? Th there was a way of dealing with, you know, interacting with them, giving them. What's the? What do you? What do they want? How do they want to interact with you? If you're a large bank, how do they want to interact with Docker? How does a hospital want to interact with yeah. Docker? How's that changing? Yeah, it, I'll, I'll I'll oversimplify it, but but it's it's not a bad conceptual place to start, and then devils in the details, right? Um, the open source and the developer tools that we provide, we announced Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows, those are about creating the market, right? Because those are downloaded, used by developers to create containers. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, within the enterprise, IT operations says, oh, my, my devs are creating all these Dockerized apps, all these containers, like, how am I going to manage them? Yeah. And nine times out of 10, IT operations, particularly in the enterprise, they want to buy a solution. They don't want to build and cobble and maintain their own separate set of scripts or stacks or whatnot. So that's where we tend to get involved with the enterprises, where the enterprise devs are already doing some projects, might be skunk works, right? Yeah. But they're creating stuff that has to be managed and in a controlled fashion, in a deployable fashion, in a rollback fashion. And so they come to us and say, Docker, can you help us? We're saying, yes, yes we can. And that is a perfect conversation to have a commercial tool conversation where enterprise IT has budget, is willing to pay for, wants certified platforms, wants um, validated security models and profiles. That's a, that's, a, that's a direct conversation that they're used to. So yeah. what they might not be used to is like, wow, my devs are going crazy with open source. Right. And then we come and say, hey, let us, let us help you with that. Well, and it's, and it's becoming a little less of a binary. Like, do I go to the cloud or do I run it myself? There's, there's sort of an in-between now, right? That's right. And, and uh, that's, that's a different mindset. They've got to learn how to adapt to that. You're changing your business, or, well, you're evolving the business because you want to you monetize we it. We want to follow that, that's yeah. right, yeah. that's right. I mean, well, we can talk about broad trends, right? I mean, I, I think none of us would disagree that, call it the last decade, maybe two decades, it's be increasingly become a buyer's, um, a buyer-driven uh, evaluation cycle because there's so much information available online and yeah. there is open source right. and there is free tools and there's Google like, that is indexing all the information out there. And so we're, we're seeing buyers just come to the table with a lot of information about what they're doing. They know about your stack. They know about your competitor's stack really, really well. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it's a digital buying environment. Right, and, and so given that, how do, you, how do you insert yourself in a very authentic way that gives them value? You've got to lower the surface area for them to participate. Yeah. And, and so our, our, cloud, our cloud product, right, right, the Docker Cloud, allows them to go in with a credit card, swipe, and get the benefits of container management, of Dockerized app management, without involving us or our sales cycle or our marketing. They just right. go in and start. So you can imagine a little development group starting like that, then they say, hey, you know what, this is great, but we need it on-prem, and then that leads to the next motion of an yeah. enterprise on-prem software. I think you nailed sale. that right we, there. We, and we right? just heard, you know, we heard that 10 minutes ago, or you know, an hour ago from, from Alexi. He said, look, if, you're, if you can't prove to somebody that you're good in five minutes or yeah, an hour, exactly or whatever, right. like the real fast, moments. yeah, yeah. Right, right away. That's yeah. exactly right. And the thing is, this digital progression now, you, as you point out, the discovery, Developers are rabid on discovery. That's right. They're going to look over. They're, they're going to look at everything. They will right? find you. They're they're gonna gonna find you. You'll be sitting in a meeting. The developer there will spin it while you're that, doing a presentation. That's exactly that's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Download it. Try it. Yeah. And raise their hand. Ask questions about that's it. Right. Did right. you just announce? So, it, it, all right. So I want to ask the question about the CIO that's out there watching or customer. Um, now the environment's changed. This is really agile. Now that person's under pressure called CXO because now you got CDOs, you have yeah. all kinds of new roles. CSO yeah. security is huge, which we haven't even touched on yet. That <coughs> executive has to be fast. They have to have a site that doesn't look like Netscape 19, you know, 98. Right. right? I know you were at Netscape. You had to <laughs> weave that in there. But right. you know, I mean, you look at some of the hot, you know, agile companies. The websites are dynamic. It's got social network effects. Mm -hmm. The older sites just look like HTML. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like, that's the way they're living in the old app days. They got to modernize really, really fast. Add mobile, right? What's they your be message to the online? CIO about modernizing and building a true application development environment that's going to drive their business? What's your advice yeah, on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, we, we see use cases across the board, or behaviors across the board to answer that question. And I'll give you a dramatic one first. We had one CIO, I'll keep, keep their name, keep their company's name nameless, but he saw, he saw that a developer-centric mindset inside his organization was the way to go. And he, he fired all the non-developers, right? And just hired only developers into his organization. And developers were also the ones carrying the pagers and, and answering the paging calls. And that was his, admittedly, very kind of dramatic way no, extending extending a, a culture to, message. To extending a culture message that we are going to be fast, we're going to think creatively, we're going to be hungry, we're going to go after it, right? Um, that is obviously a tail case, right? Most organizations, um, they start with a, a small surface area project, 
they start with a Skunk Works team and, and they, they lift and shift and just get it into Docker okay. containers and start feeling that start feeling that transition right I away. love that example, so I have to ask a follow-on yeah. question. What was the operations team like? Did he fire the ops team or was that transformed? And because you no, know, you bring in developer-centric mindset, you have an you have to have an operations team that can be really on the new security paradigms. On the cloud, on the cloud On model. the cloud delivery, yep, yep. so there's a lot of details on the ops or operations side right. that was once five nines, no, 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 no ops well, now have to be DevOps. Well, I mean, the SLAs don't go down, right? I mean, I mean no, no one wakes up and says, you know what, five by 12 is enough. We don't need 724, we're a bank, we don't, right? No one, yeah, they no have one, to maintain. No one does that, right? And so, you've got to maintain your service levels while moving faster, and that is the conundrum that we've been wrestling with for the last couple of decades. That's what arose, that's what drove DevOps, right? Which is like, how do you get all this benefits of Agile over here in the development arm, but get it flowing all the way through to app delivery? What's the trend right? in the IT ops that you see that's significant? That's a different change from just uh, five years ago or, or a decade ago, where the practices are different. And can you share any anecdotal color around that concept? I, I mean, we are, we are seeing um, public cloud be a, a, a defined thing on every CTO, CIO's roadmap. Like, they must have a public, not, not just hybrid cloud, right? Not like private hybrid cloud. They have to have a public cloud, and that's different than even 12 or 18 months ago. Um, obviously, containerization, dockerization is a huge, is a huge trend. Um, and I'll say comfort with a variety of languages, programming languages, because they want to entice dev developers to have, um, have the flexibility to choose Node, or choose Python, or choose Ruby. And so, um, those, are, those are three big trends we're seeing in the development, as well as in the operations organization. All right, so the question I have to ask you that came up multiple times in uh, this past two days was, the whole theme that your go-to-market looks a lot like VMware. You have a lot of VMware DNA in your company, um, and now what VMware didn't have at the time, back then, was they weren't really involved in open source. No. So what's interesting is, is that, no. can you, or is it true that you guys are a, have a VMware-like go-to-market, um, or is that just kind of banter, well, or? I mean, you can, you can given, given a random set of dots, you can connect any line through <laughs> them, right? So <laughs> let's, let's be careful to uh, ascribe uh, causation and correlation. Um, uh, look, uh, the way in which new emerging technology is adopted, it's a very similar pattern. I mean, did AWS pick up production workloads on day one? They did not. No. Did, did no. VMware pick up production workloads on day one? They did not. File and print, dev test, QA. And in that sense, is Docker following, following VMware? Well, we're following- it's all successful we're, playbook. We're following a very successful playbook that has been done again and again and mm -hmm. again since time immemorial of emerging tech, right? So yes, we are, we are landing with developers, we're doing dev tests, and we yeah. expand so that's a trajectory, from there. a successful trajectory. Th that's right. Not, you can put in whatever that's name right. you want to it. The, the second thing, though, that, that I, I will say is that because we are focused on a product, as, as you said, we're, we are a product-centric company, um, we are very motivated to make partners successful, the ecosystem successful, in terms of the distribution and the go-to-market. And so our conversation earlier about HP and IBM and half a dozen other wonderful partners, uh, that's very deliberate. And that you can say, well, gosh, VMware followed a similar play. Um, but that VMware was also very much a... Let's talk about the alliances, how important they are to you, because this is really a big deal in my mind. I think this is a Docker moment where you guys crack the code on potentially not just scale and market, but now relationships that you're fusing together, kind of the Switzerland model, where you have the goodness of the container stuff, and we haven't got to security yet, which we can talk to, but by bringing the big companies together and the startups yeah. in the white space on the ecosystem, yeah. you're enabling the market. That's an enabling platform. Yeah, that's right. How are you guys going to execute that as the COO? Uh, what's the mandate? Just keep doing more deals? Is it deeper integration? Is there a playbook? I mean, is there a tiered approach? So, so You've got, to give, you've got to give the industry as well as your partners, your subset of, of, in the industry, you have to give them a roadmap, a playbook, right? And that, that playbook has things like, what are the common use cases? What are the two or three common use cases? Because if you don't, your message just gets kind of pushed out and diluted and everyone's wondering kind of like, okay, how do I use this and when do I use this? So it starts with having a very common and, and concrete and specific set of use cases that everyone's going to play on, regardless of channel, regardless of partner type. Like, these are the things we're going after. Backing that up is a set of reference architectures that, to your question, reference not only the partner's role in that reference architecture, but, but also the startup's mm -hmm. role in that architecture. I want to do monitoring, I want to do logging, I want to do security. Great, we've got 450 registered partners 
you know, through a half dozen, dozen different categories that can plug into that reference architecture and basically provide the enterprise IT group with a blueprint of how to be successful with the solution. So those are two very specific motions that we're working on across the partnerships to make sure that the partners are successful, the customers are successful, and we're successful. And, and you're investing heavily. And we're successful. Absolutely, in that. absolutely, as an organization, yeah. with well, the partners. I, I look over one of your shoulders, <coughs> Amazon's there, Azure's over your other shoulder, there's a Docker cloud now. What, where, does the, where does the Docker public cloud story go? I mean, if, if, I, if I go to Azure, they're going to tell me about the number of data centers they have and certifications and valid, sure, you know, sure. you're going to be in country. I mean, are we going to be hearing about that in Docker cloud? Where does the partnership sure. go? Where are third party service providers fit and all that? No, good, good question, Brian. Um, remember, Docker cloud is the control plane. It's not where the workloads land. Okay. So Docker cloud drives workloads on Azure, on Amazon, okay. on Google Compute, and and we're agnostic, right? And in fact, that's one of the, the value propositions of Docker Cloud is that we're not tied to any particular cloud compute workload okay. provider. And, and we see a lot of customers doing dual cloud approaches with Docker Cloud as the common control plane across them, or dual clouds and on-prem, mm -hmm. all being managed out of Docker Cloud. Yeah. And so that's where it fits in the landscape. Okay. Again, going, drawing back, if you're hearing a common theme, drawing back to the portability theme of Docker, it's portability not just in the literal application artifacts and the runtime, but portability in the management tooling that spans hybrid cloud, okay. multi-cloud. So it'll be anybody who wants to stand up and, and, and run Docker Data Center as a service that can be tied into that Docker Cloud offering. That, that's one example as well. I'll give you a fun kind of hack where um, a lot of the early usage of Docker Cloud was um, we, have a, we have a bring your own node technology where you can drop an agent on the node and register it with Docker Cloud and you can manage it out of Docker Cloud. One of the early use cases was developers bringing their laptop putting the agent on their laptop and going back up through the firewall and managing it on Docker Cloud because they just wanted tools to manage and deploy Docker containers, but they wanted to do it locally. So they'd fire up a couple VMs, have a couple nodes on their laptop, be managing that from Docker Cloud, SaaS multi-tenant service yeah. outside their firewall. Right? Yeah. Really yeah, interesting. Different, yeah, different, kind of different. backward way of thinking about it, or you know, reverse way of thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was their way of kicking the tires. So That's to your digital progression of how people are discovering. Right, I mean, you exactly can't, right. There's no boilerplate marketing anymore. That's right. You've got to kind of lower the service follow, area. Follow the users, right? Love follow the users. the service area for value. That's right. That's awesome. That's right. That's how you do business. Scott, final question, just next year, what's your key metrics for, top three metrics for the year that you're running the business on Docker this year? Look, I mean, Docker wouldn't be anything without the community. That's that's this event, that's the, the over 4,000 participants here, it's, it's why you're here. So, so community is going to continue to be number one. We're just going to continue to see and want to see uh, exponential growth in that community. And that's just, not just numbers, right, but engagement in meetups, mm -hmm. in, in participation in those meetups, in, in the conference, yeah. in the talks, and the quality of the talks. And so that's going to continue to be huge. Um, then you're obviously going to see downstream from that usage, and this goes to open source adoption. You heard our announcement yesterday about uh, Docker 112 building orchestration primitives as from the get-go into the core engine, we think that is the right way to develop multi-container, multi-host applications. And so seeing that adoption pick up in the open source community, and obviously the third one after that is, okay, we've created a community, we've created an open source market of users, actively engaged users, and a subset of those will want enterprise tools to manage those workloads. And so we're going to have a business metric that's very important right on the backs of those first two. All right, Scott, thanks for taking the time out of your super busy schedule to share your insight on theCUBE. Appreciate it, thanks for your support, by the way. Our, Thank uh, you. We've been here every year, DockerCon, watching it grow, and appreciate the executive support. You guys have been very candid on theCUBE. Um, no, I would appreciate your support, John, Brian, and it's, uh, it's exciting to be part of. Thanks. Thank you. You're watching theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracie here, Scott Johnson, CEO, Chief Operating Officer at Docker. This is theCUBE, live in Seattle. I'll be right back after this short break. You're watching theCUBE.